That company had a hard time understanding my thought process and who I was. And when I told them, my biggest fans are the youth because sometimes people my age and, and people that look like me didn't really understand me. So I need to appeal to the youth because the youth was the one going out there telling mommy, daddy, I want those shoes. Wow. I need you to buy those shoes. So my marketing hat was always on, even at an early age and an early stage of my life. And I was always comfortable around kids. So it's not far-fetched to understand why I'm coaching right now, because I have an affinity for kids in trying to progress them to be professionals, not just professional football players, but professionals, period. I wish the day that the draft was held, the next day we had a, a corporation and a Fortune 500 draft. Because see, I want my kids to be out there. Not just my biological kids, but my kids that play for me at Jackson State. We got 97% of these kids that are not going pro. What's gonna happen to them? I need them to make a difference in life. I need them to be somebody. I need them to go in and enhance their communities. I need them to make a change somewhere in life and to be great fathers and to be great parents and to be great kids. That's the mindset that I have for my youngsters. If there's, yeah, give it up, exactly. If there are athletes right now, if there are athletes right now, whatever sport, and you, like their example, on the field and also off the field, and these are your kids, who would you tell them to watch? Jesus. That's play. Uh, uh, the great recruiter right here. Yeah, but see, oftentimes, you gotta understand those things that you see, those things that you clap for, those things that you cheer for, those things that you idolize, they're not role models, they're models playing a role. You don't, you don't know who they are. You just saw them doing what they're gifted and blessed to do for two hours of the day. Could you imagine if the world got an opportunity to see you at your best for two hours a day, how your, your profile would just be enhanced, everything would be wonderful, everything would be so different, because we're showing you for two hours doing what you're gifted to do. But what happens to the other 22? See, that's where the problem occurs. That's where the trappings of life yeah. occurs. And so oftentimes we do fall into those trappings. I would advise you to be that role model for your child, for your friend, for your homies, for that person that looks up to you and looks out for you. You need to be that person. The role model should be somebody you can touch. My mama was my role model, man. My, my mama was that. My mama was all that in a bag of chips and would cuss you out to this day and not stumble over word. My mama worked and made sure Ann saw one another, although they never met. My mother, even when I made it, she never asked for mink coats and, and gold chains and diamonds, although I got that for her. She's on her third home now, never asked for one because she was old school. She just wanted what was best for me. And she wasn't thirsty, she wasn't hungry, she wasn't seeking and searching for attention and adulations. And now we got parents trying to be the boss. We got parents trying to be in every commercial, trying to be in every shot. Although I did put my mama in a Super Bowl commercial, which you're gonna see on Sunday. Yeah, I had to make her do, I had to make her do that. But it's a different game out there, so we got to be careful who we're calling role models. But I truly believe the role model you should be able to touch. You know, when did that change for you? Because, you know, we all seen you with the chains, the, the jewelry. That was when image. That, that was image. Okay. Something you could imagine. That was not me. See, I'm a marketer. I market. And I'm pretty darn good at it. You should clap for me right there. Because <laughs> I'm about to tell you a few things that you're not going to believe. I created that persona. I created that character. I'm from Fort Myers, Florida. Anybody here from Fort Myers? Okay, let me tell you something, baby. When we grew up, the drug dealers were the guys. The rappers were the guys. What did they have? The gold chains, the flamboyant look, the flash, the whips. I gave the kids that, allowing them to know you didn't have to do that. So it was all persona and perception and, and, 
and you had to believe what you want to believe. Now, let me tell you the truth of the matter. I stopped using profanity in 1986. No, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not done with telling you about prime. I'm in the third person now. I've never been high a day of my life. Hold on, I'm not done. I've never smoked a drink, sip a taste of alcohol, wine, or anything in my entire life. So all the stupid and the foolish and the idiotic things out there that I did, I just did that, all right? I was not under the influence, but that was really me, all right? But that was all uh, image just to bring attractability, just to bring something to a position um, that people had never seen before. That's all that was. How do you feel now that after you established that for all the cornerbacks, mm -hmm. of, of, at least from a visibility standpoint so they can start paying these cornerbacks, and fast forward 10, 15, 20 years later, I think the, the, the stat was the top 12 cornerbacks in the NFL, their average salary was your top salary when you were playing. I love it, because that means I was a forerunner. You think I'm gonna sit here and be jealous and to be upset of another man or another woman when God has blessed me the way he's blessed me? That ain't even in me. I'm, I'm not a jealous person. I'm not an envious person. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you the game. I'm gonna give you the playbook. I'm gonna give you the knowledge. When I see a kid taking a, a, a left when he should stay right, I pick up a phone and call him. I don't even have to know him. I mean, rapper, entertainer, athlete, anything. I pick up a phone and just say, look, man, God has called me to be a navigational system. I'm not perfect, but I'm darn show present. And I'm gonna get it right and I'm gonna try my best to lead you to where you wanna go because I know how to get there. And I made a lot of mistakes, but I'm able to go back and say, no, 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 no. It's like that, it's, it's like that, 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 that fighter, that fighter. He's in there fighting and you guys are in there fighting. You gotta have somebody in the corner saying left, right. Okay, hit him with the left, hit him with the right. All, oftentimes you try to do all this stuff by yourself. And that's not gonna happen. You're going to have to have a coach. You're going to have to have a team. You're going to have somebody that has your back that's able to give you direction and you got to receive correction and not toot your mouth up and twist your head and start rolling your neck and start snapping around in a circle. You can't do all that. You got to be able to accept direction and correction. Thank you. We'll go back to the kids right quick. Because I'm just curious, how, do, how have you raised them to be competitive and how do they move up or, and or down on your daddy leader bulletin? <laughs> Say that again? Yeah, how do they move up and down daddy's leader's bulletin? Oh, they got to do stuff for daddy. That's how they move up and down. They got, they got, I, I they got, they got, they got no, no Christmas gift. They got me nothing for Christmas, but they expect something. You know, I, I really say, I, when they come over, I really say, y'all got to go back to the car and go ahead and get that. because. I know you didn't walk in here empty handed <laughs> with expectation, uh, and, but they do. My, my son's birthday was yesterday and I said, happy birthday, son. I'm going to get you just what you got me. <laughs> Nothing. All right. But I got a whole lot of wisdom and understanding for you. I don't want that, daddy. OK. Uh, give me that first part of that question. Yeah. And, and how do you how do you stoke competition amongst your children? And, and, and not have that my, sibling rivalry where it's destructive. My kids are very competitive and uh, they're very active because of what they've seen. I've, I've shown them things. So you got to be careful. Athletes have to be careful of this and early retirees have to be careful of this when you're retired and you are doing nothing to help the country, to help the community, to help anything. You're just sitting there on a stack of money, just laid back, and your kid's gonna assess that and say, well, my daddy ain't done nothing because they didn't see me in my prime. Hmm. So I gotta create life and have them to understand that, no, 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 daddy gets up and works out in the morning. No, daddy is sweating by the time you get up. Daddy's already eating breakfast and he's ready for the day. Daddy's on Zoom calls, he's making it happen. Daddy's forth thoughtful. He's, he's really th seeing things in the future that's trying to make sure to happen. Daddy is bringing people together. He's bringing unity and provoking change. They had to see all that stuff for themselves and then get in where they fit in. So now that they could see some of my attributes, now they could 
adopt some of them. They're not going to adopt all of them. Quit getting to the situation where you think your kids are going to be you. It ain't but one you. And you should be thankful it ain't but one you. It'll never be another you. That attitude you got, we don't want that, okay? That tardiness you got, no, no, nobody want that. But all those true qualities, yeah, you could have all that thing, but those things, but it's only one you. And I don't expect from my kids what I would do. I used to, and I got my little feelings hurt. If I expect that they're going to do this because I would have done that, I'm going to get my little feelings hurt because they got to learn for themselves. But it's up to you to be that cut man in the corner and it's up to you to be that navigational system for them without bashing them or belittling them. One thing that I've learned with my team, and I've learned this a long time ago in coaching, I exude love, my man. I, I exude love in all its attributes and all its components, then I've learned how to listen. I got love, I exude that, I give that, then I sit back, I learn how to listen, okay? Then I'm a straight leader, love, listen, and I lead, and then I forgot my other L, it's gonna come to me in a minute. <laughs> It's Let not go. laugh, I, 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 I laugh, it's, it's laugh. not laugh, that was a good one. It'll come to me in a minute. My mind is way down the street right now. <laughs> when, when, you're looking at, um, when you're looking at your career, I'm sure in addition to your victories and success, your championships, you also had tough and difficult losses. Yes. What is the loss that comes out to you right now? It's probably one of your toughest losses in your career, whether uh, baseball or football. My money in divorce court twice. Okay. Probably my <laughs> Football or baseball divorce. It's probably, it's probably my toughest loss. It was a tough fault case, but you know I lost some. Man, God gave it back to me in the end. But no, no, no. Straight up, straight up. Honestly, that was my toughest loss. Just, just going through the nonsense of of life, understanding that um, someone you lay with, you produce children with, is going to come out to be a darn war about something you worked your butt off for. And that's traumatic. But guess what? Sooner or later, you got to wipe your tears, put on a new suit, take a good shower, and get back out there and go get it. Okay? It's, it's a lot of you right now. You need to thank God that he left. You need to thank God that she played you. You need to thank God that they did you that way. You need to thank God that they walked the way. You need to thank God that you got strong enough where you finally said, no, you ain't doing me like that no more. And you need to thank God that it happened because if it hadn't happened, you wouldn't be as strong. You wouldn't be as tough. You wouldn't be as resilient. You wouldn't be as provocative as you are now. So some things we got to thank God for because God is trying to move that out the way so he can usher in and blessing you to a whole new beginning. And that's why I am. You know, I'm 54 years old, looking like 35, 37, somewhere like that, you know. And, and it's, it's like a whole new chapter. You know, I, I've been prime time, then I cut the time off, you know, then I was just prime, and now I'm coach prime. It's a whole new chapter, and guess what? <laughs> I'm still winning. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Still winning. God, I'm and still winning. Stop. So it's not a day to go by. I'm not thinking of ways to enhance not just Jackson State, all HBCUs. I'm calling everything out. I, I, I mean, the dorms, the food, the look. My thing was when I got to Jackson, I said, how in the world could a darn public high school look better than a public college? That don't make sense to me. How in the world can can this college eat this and we have to eat that? That don't make sense to me. I start calling presidents. Not presidents on campus, but presidents of these companies. Look, I got a problem with our foods. Um, we need to handle this. And I get everybody from the college and I get everybody from the company and we find out where the lie is. And the lie has to get up and go because they're, not, they're forgetting not only am I fighting for your kid and your kid and your kid and your kid and that kid of all ethnicities, but my kids are there on campus. So you think for one minute I'm going to let your kid, your kid, your kid, your kid of all ethnicities starve and not sleep comfortably and my kids are on campus as well? You, the devil is a lie. We deserve the absolute best. We're going to get the absolute best. 
we're going to have the absolute best. It's no way that a college two hours down the road should be living better than we're living. It's no way in the world. And not only that, you got to challenge the people that graduated. See, everybody clapped that attended, but everybody, those claps would cease when I talk about the giving back. Because that's where the difference is. The giving back. We have the propensity not to give back to what's blessed us. Baby, if you bless me like you blessed me today, you call me. We in Dallas. We're going to dinner. Me, you, wife, and my lady, we're going to dinner because you blessed me. And I got to pay it forward. We got to learn how to do that, people. Yeah. We got to start blessing what blessed us. All the time, we just walk away and don't even look back over our shoulder and holler, I got mine. I know you got yours, but somebody else need to get theirs. <laughs> So with that being said, who's the most competitive player you played against? Uh, same. Mike Irvin. I played against all three of those guys, but I would give Mike the nod. So which, which player, either sport, who, which player earned the most respect from you? Earned the most respect? Shoot. Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds is the best baseball player I've ever seen in my life. It's nothing that he couldn't do. And it's an atrocity what they're doing with him with the Hall of Fame. That's an atrocity that I don't understand that. But Barry Bonds, even before any steroid accusations, he had three MVPs at home on the shelf. Um, he was undarn believable and dedicated to the game, loved the game and outfield, stealing bases, hitting. He was the most feared player ever to me. Who's your, who's your Mount Rushmore of players? That's easy, that's easy. Okay, that's easy, okay. Hank Aaron, for what he endured in trying to eclipse Babe Ruth in the home run title, the racism, the injustice, and just, it was ignorant, the death threats, all that, but he stayed locked and he stayed focused. Uh, Muhammad Ali, because, shoot, where, where would I start? He, he was the greatest, he, 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 he gave African Americans a, a, a hope and a power and an inner believing that we are somebody and we can overcome. Uh, Dr. J, he was the Michael Jordan before Michael Jordan. He was, he was smooth, he was suave, he's a handsome gentleman. He, he, they called him doctor and he didn't even have a PhD. You're not bad. <laughs> I, I, I grew up on him. And this is going to startle you. Um, and my final guy is O.J. Simpson. Not the O.J. you know in the Bronco, okay? <laughs> the other O.J. that I grew up on. I had juice mobiles when I was a kid. There was these shoes that Spot Built made. O.J. was so suave and O.J. was so, so beloved by both ethnicity, all ethnicities, I'm sorry. And he took care of his linemen. His linemen took care of him. We went over 2,000 yards. He was one of the most beloved persons in our country at one point in time because he had crossed over. Um, and, yeah. you know, then it, it took a sad left. Okay. But those four individuals, I took bits and pieces and qualities and incorporated them in prime. But still, the stability of it all was my mama. Okay. So she was the underlining of it all. So I could take that, but still, that's who I could touch every day. That's who I saw every day. So I incorporated her work ethic with those gentlemen, and I comprised Prime. If there's one thing you can tell anybody on what to do with their money, what would it be? Uh, what to do with your money, and what would it be? You got to bet on you. It's so funny that you believe in others you would bet on others, you would support others, you would be there for others, you would even lie at times for others, but when it come to you, you take a darn back seat. I don't understand it. Um, I'm not a gambler. I don't play with money of that nature. When I go to casinos, I don't even frequent down there. They don't even give me free room because they know I ain't spending no money, okay? <laughs> but every now and then, I go put about $100 on 21 black. That's just an analogy. He got it, you didn't. That just meaning, that was my numbers, ladies, in football. That just means I'm going to bet on me. I said, but I really came from Fort Myers then. I said, I'm going to bet on me. I'm going to believe in me. 
because I know what I got inside me. I'm going to bet on me, regardless of what you think. I'm going to be there for me, regardless if you there or not. I see me. I know what I'm capable of. I know my shortcomings. I know what I would do under pressure. I know what I won't do under pressure. I've introduced myself to me probably over two decades ago, and I know me. Gillette. I had a Gillette shoot at the crib because I can't really get around, so they come to the crib, thank God, to do a lot of my uh, spots. And my second oldest son, Shiloh, had a shoot with me. Say, for instance, the shoot started at 7 p.m., which it did. The night before, I was in Jackson. I said, Shiloh, Dad is getting ready to drive back. If you want to jump in and ride with me, we're straight. You could just fly back after the shoot. He said, no, Dad. Uh, I'm going somewhere. I say, you're going to the club with your, with your brother. I know where you're going. You're going to kick it, and you got this little funky girl that's trying to do something with you, and that's what you're going to do, but you know you got business in. So he showed up to the, the spot, the shoot, probably about 10 minutes late, something like that. So I told my people, because we have the same representation, dock him for the time that he was late, because he has to learn um, good stewardship and understanding what you need to do. So we went through the whole read. I'm reading a whole prompter and reading all the stuff and doing being prime. He really, he's seen me in this light, but he's never seen me do what I do. So, and I'm helping him. They gave him one little part, which I said, we're going to give him a little more. It don't make no sense for him to drive several hours to, to be on camera for three minutes. So he was just fumbling and stumbling and, and, and it was horrible. So afterwards, I got on his butt and said, look, man, you don't understand. You got to take this just like a game. You got to be serious. This is real. This is how daddy keep lights on around the house. This is how daddy, you have two cars and you're in college and you're in a house, but in a gated community in college and your brother. This is how this stuff happens. But you got to start being this guy that they think you are. And uh, he went back. He studied his butt off and came back the next day and brought it. But we docked him. We made him understand that there's a responsibility that comes along with being the man. Everybody want to be the man or everybody be, want to be the woman until it's time to be the man and the woman. Because there's a lot of responsibilities come with being the man or the woman. And you guys ain't ready for that. You got to just sit back while you a backup dancer and hit your parts and sing your key and hit your notes. But every once in a while, God is gonna call you up front to get your solo, and you better be ready. <laughs> you better be ready. What type of player do you recruit? Who plays for Coach Prime? Smart, not just book intelligent. A guy that's gonna make the right decisions on the field, off the field. It's not going to do nothing stupid, not going to do nothing weary, not going to do nothing selfish, not going to be inconsistent, smart. A guy that's tough. I'm old school. I, I coach old school. I don't say, oh, little Johnny, it's going to be all right. No, Johnny, it ain't going to be all right if you don't get your butt to this ball. Like that, that, I'm just old school. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't pacify kids. I don't pacify them whatsoever. And I'm very structured. In practice, we're going to wear black socks. We're going to look the same. Your, your game should make you individual, not what you wear. So you're not going to see nobody in Jackson with one pant leg up and one down like they flow Joe and all that stupidity and all that self-absorbentness. Well, Coach Prime, you did that. No, I didn't. If you really study my game, I did not. I did not. Smart, tough, mentally, physically, psychologically, fast. Not just football fast, but I need you to learn that playbook fast. When you're hurt, get your butt in the training room because I need you to heal fast. I need you to comprehend, to see it, read, and react fast. So I need that stuff fast and discipline. You can do anything you want, baby. If you don't have no discipline in your life, your life is going to be pure hell. If you don't have no discipline and consistency in your life, your life is not going to go far. And then I need character. So your kid could be whoever. He could be that dude. But if you don't have no character... I don't want him. And with my coaches, out of that four smart, tough, fast discipline, they got to be three of those. You don't have to be one. But then if the character don't match, we don't vote for him. So all of it has to come before me. And also, I want to see you practice. Anybody could put together a highlight tape of my highlights. Let me see your whole game and your lowlights. I want to see you practice because normally how you practice that's who you are. That's who you are. The person you are at home, when nobody's looking, that's who you are. 
The person that said, oh, oh they said that, that darn, they ain't gonna never make that darn leaderboard. They ain't right. They cheat. And they doing so it. A, a, the phone is a distraction of this day. I'm just curious. During your time playing, what was the distractions back then? And how did you handle it? Uh, the distractions when I played <laughs> was Jezebel and Delilah. <laughs> it is still a distraction. <laughs> and it ain't gonna change. <laughs> Those were distractions. And it still is for our kids. Because that Instagram, that social media is unbelievable, man. You can meet anybody you want to meet with a click of a button. And they do it. And they do it. But I try to prepare them for all the ills and the wiles of life. I try my best to, to prepare them. The things that we go through, I try my best to forward think and, and prepare my young men. Because I wanted them to make it with all means, man. I got to equip them with every darn thing I can. I, I got, the Bible says God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. Some of the things you may think I utilize that are foolish things, but I got to get them wise. I got to make sure they're where they need to be and get to where they need to go. Coach, to wrap up time of the day, I, I have something here called the speed round. Okay. Fitting, fitting for you, right? Fitting. And uh, the first answer that comes off the top of your head, shoot. I like okay. that. I like All right. That. So get ready. Put your seatbelts on. Here we go. But I got a heck of an imagination. <laughs> Speaking of speed, who's the fastest? You or Bo Jackson? Me. <laughs> you have a four two one, but he's got a four one seven. Hey, hey, who's who recorded it? Who said it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And mine, right. mine was that morning for breakfast, by the way. So I ran a four two one for breakfast. <laughs> So if you'd have caught me at lunch, it'd have been something else, boy. But I love Bo. If it weren't for Bo, it wouldn't have been no prime. So I love Bo. I love him. He paved the way for me. By the way, Vic and Anna, we got Vic and Anna, they unknowingly leased an office space. And guess who's on the first floor? Bo Jackson. Bo is? Yeah. You're joking. He's selling meat. He's selling meat. This is the weirdest thing. He ran into him in the... In, in, the, in, in, the, in the foyer. Uh, speaking of Bo, what's one thing that you think separates you between Bo? That's a darn good one. Swag. <laughs> yeah. Tell Bo to do that. <laughs> oh, that's that swag, baby. Give me some yeah. that one, baby. <laughs> um, when you guys actually ended up playing football against each other, who we got played, the best? We played adventure? in college. We didn't play in pros. In college, I was a freshman at Florida State. Started, by the way, playing against Auburn and Bo Jackson, and 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 Bo was Bo. Bo was Bo. <laughs> Um, I can remember this play like it was yesterday, man. They, they were in that affirmation or whatever, and it was a timeout, TV timeout. And coming off the timeout, he went to the crowd and like got him up. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. Because <laughs> I knew he was getting the ball. When you start doing telltale, this is like a receiver runs out the huddle fast. I know you're getting the ball because you're running out the huddle fast. Other than that, you jaw because you're mad because they're running play. So I understand <laughs> And I was playing left corner, and the, it was a sweep to his left, away from me. And Bo broke, ran over three, four people, and I went and got him. Ran up on him like a Lamborghini. And when I got there, Bo put his hand on my helmet and prayed for me. He said, I just want this guy to be great in the name of Jesus. And pushed me on down, and guess what, I was great.